Yeah, the talk is about probabilistic degrees of symmetric Boolean functions and uh, this is joint work with Srikanth and uh, Utkarsh. So, well the class of Boolean functions that we are interested in are symmetric Boolean functions. So, just to start with the basics, the domain of the functions is the Boolean hypercube and uh, using the Hamming weight function, so the Hamming weight of any vector is the number of ones in the vector, we can partition the hypercube into layers where uh, we have one layer per weight and symmetric functions are those which take exactly one value per layer and if you consider polynomial representations for symmetric Boolean functions then we get symmetric polynomials which are also multilinear, multilinear in the sense uh, all the monomials in the polynomial representation are square free in some sense. So, let us start with some examples, the majority function is sort of takes the value 1 when the input weight is at least n by 2 and 0 otherwise this is sort of the graph. So, black indicates 0 for us and white indicates 1 that is how it is. So, the degree of majority as a polynomial is going to be omega n, the OR function is slightly different takes the value 0 at the all zeros input and 1 everywhere else and again as we know the degree is n. The mod function is uh, sort of defined depending on the characteristic. So, we will choose a prime that is not equal to the characteristic of the field. So, if the character is characteristic is 0, we pick some prime and if it is a finite characteristic positive characteristic then we feel then we choose a prime that is not equal to it. In which case the mod function gives us a graph like this and the degree is going to be again omega n. Okay. So, it takes value 1 when the input weight is 0 mod q and 0 otherwise. The threshold function is a more generalized uh, uh, definition which captures majority as well as or. So, take a threshold parameter t and takes the value 1 whenever the input weight is at least t and 0 otherwise and again the degree of threshold function is omega n. So, these are some examples of symmetric Boolean functions where the degree is omega n relatively high and what we would like to do is approximate them with low degree polynomials. So, that is where our notion of probabilistic polynomial and probabilistic degree comes into picture. So, start with a Boolean function and this is more or less how it looks. So, if you think of polynomials as the model for computing the functions then a natural complexity measure is a degree and if you think of the randomized version then what we get is the probabilistic polynomial which is the distribution of polynomials used to approximate the function up to some error and the corresponding uh, complexity measure is what we call the probabilistic degree which will be the max degree of the polynomials in the support. So, more formally start with a boolean function f and uh, take an error parameter epsilon, an epsilon error probabilistic polynomial for f is defined to be a random polynomial. So, it need not follow the uniform distribution, it is some distribution of polynomials with finite support such that at any given input if you randomly pick a polynomial from the distribution the agreement with the function is with high probability. So, with probability 1 minus epsilon in this case and the degree of the random polynomial the probabilistic polynomial is defined to be the max degree of the polynomials in the support. And the epsilon error probabilistic degree is defined to be quite naturally the minimum among the degrees of all the probabilistic polynomials that approximate this function. Let us go into some history of uh, yeah. no no we fix a field. So, since these are boolean functions we are only concerned with the base field and we assume that the characteristic is fixed throughout it could be 0 or a positive characteristic, but we fix it correct yeah. Yeah right. So, this is different from uh, sort of approximate agreement it is not uh, 1 minus epsilon agreement on fraction of points it is at every point you agree with probability 1 minus epsilon. So, the definition was start given by Rasborough and the initial works of Rasborough and Smolensky led to lower bounds for Boolean circuits for the AC0 mod P class. Then the works of Tarui and 
Bejel, Reingold and Spilman led to probability degree upper bounds for AC0. This in turn was used by Breverman to show that polylogarithmic independence fools AC0 which settles the linearness and conjecture. And more recently, the probability degree of any symmetric Boolean function was shown to be big O square root n by Allman Williams when you fix the error for constant error. And this in turn was used to get a subquadratic time algorithm for a version of the nearest neighbor problem. So, symmetric Boolean functions are also interesting in the context of other complexity models. For example, AC0 mod P circuits of quasi polynomial size. Uh, the polynomial itself as the computational model, but the approximate degree over reals as the complexity measure and also constant depth perceptrons. So, a fairly interesting class of Boolean functions and an interesting uh, definition for the complexity measure. So, what do we do here? So, let us start by looking at how do we approximate majority. So, Rasborough and Smolensky initially gave us a lower bound of square root n when the error is constant. So, we will throughout this talk fix the error to be 0 0.01, 1 by 100. And very recently the Allman Williams uh, proof gave us an upper bound of square root n. So, this was a curious case of the upper bound following the lower bound. And Allman Williams did more. So, they showed that for any symmetric Boolean function the probability degree is big O square root n. Some other examples are as follows. Rasborough also gave us uh, matching upper and lower bounds of constant for uh, the OR function over finite fields. Over the reals we do have a gap. We know that the lower bound is something like square root log n and the upper bound is log n, but there is a gap. There is a gap which we do not know how to bridge yet. And for the mod q function if we fix distinct primes p and q, then again we have matching upper and lower bounds. This is again a case of the upper bound following the lower bound. So, what are we interested in in this talk? We would like to get such bounds for the more general class of symmetric Boolean functions. So, the question is as follows, given any symmetric Boolean function, can you find a suitably interesting upper bound and lower bound on the probability degree? Let us fix constant error. Yeah. Historically. No, 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 for mod q. For majority and for mod q, yeah. Right. So, what are we interested here? So, this is the basic question for this talk. Given any symmetric Boolean function, can we find upper and lower bounds on the probability degree for constant error? More importantly, do they match? And our answer is yes, up to polylog factors in n. So, in order to get to the statement of our theorem, we will consider a decomposition of Boolean functions. So, for any Boolean function g, let us first define the period uh, in a very natural way. So, these are symmetric Boolean functions and therefore, they can be thought of as functions of the Hamming weight. So, more or less a univariate function. So, the smallest positive integer such that g of i plus k gives g of i for all valid values of i that will be defined to be the period of the function g. So, there is a slight abuse of notation here. This is the Boolean function g as a function of the weights that is all. And the standard decomposition of f is defined as follows. Look at the interval of weights n by 3 to 2 n by 3 and choose the function g which has the least period which agrees with f on the interval n by 3 to 2 n by 3 and take h to be the sort of the mod 2 sum of f and g. So, the pair g comma h will be called the standard decomposition of uh, f. And one example is as follows. So, if you take majority, then we restrict our attention to the interval n by 3 to 2 n by 3. And in this region, well, the period will be n by 3. And when you extend it naturally to both sides, g becomes this function and the mod 2 sum is going to be h. Okay. So, the point to note here is that h is going to be constant on a on the large middle region of the hypercube 
and probably arbitrary on the periphery right. So, these kind of functions are going to be interesting to us which are essentially k bounded functions we call them k bounded functions which are functions which are constant on the set of weights k to n minus k and take arbitrary values at the periphery. So, it is quite possible that given a k there is also a k prime which is less than k such that the function is also k prime bounded. So, we want the best value of k and which is what we denote by b of f. So, given a boolean function f b of f is the smallest k such that f is k bounded and why are we interested in this quantity it is because we will be interested in this uh, quantity b of h where h comes from the decomposition of f. So, start with the symmetric boolean function over a field f with characteristic p, p could be 0 or a fixed prime. Take the standard decomposition, h is going to be b h bounded and it is not going to be k bounded for any k that is less than b h that is sort of the observation here. The upper bounds that we get are as follows. So, if the period of g is positive and not a power of p. So, not being a power of p also includes a case where the characteristic is 0 ok. So, if the period is not a power of p then we get an upper bound of square root n and if it is a power of p then it could possibly be lower than square root n. So, it is the minimum of square root n and this quantity period of g plus square root of b of h. So, one thing to note here is that we are only concerned with symmetric boolean functions and big O square root n is already an upper bound given by Allman Williams. So, essentially the theorem says if the period is not a power of p then we cannot do any better and if it is a power of p then probably we can use the finite characteristic property of the field and do slightly better than that. And the second part of the theorem says that the lower bounds match up to polylog factors. So, again if the period is not a power of p it is omega tilde square root n and otherwise the other expression we are hiding the polylog factors here and which is why we have the tilde. So, so let us start with lower bounds. So, here we will consider a, a small concept called the restrictions more or less clear what it means but let me just define it for this talk. So, start with the boolean function uh, it should be f ok and take a partition of the uh, the set of uh, variables let us call it n z and u and a restriction of the function f corresponding to this partition is essentially defined this way. So, n is the set of variables which are uh, left unassigned. So, they stay variables z is the set of variables which are assigned 0 and u is the set of variables which are assigned 1. So, for any such partition the corresponding function on the smaller hypercube the smaller subcube will be called a restriction of the function ok. So, now uh, let us start with the lower bound for uh, thresholds and slowly we will build up to getting the final theorem. So, this is the statement for the threshold probability degrees omega square root t and how do we go about it? Well, more or less straightforward look at the graph of the function and we see that uh, you know, there is a sub cube over which this threshold function is basically majority. So, we just restrict to that sub cube and get a majority function on 2t many variables and therefore, the probability degree is at least omega square root t. So, that is how we get it. How do we go ahead from here? Let us get lower bound for h and here is where we will use restrictions. So, let us start with uh, the standard decomposition and b of h is uh, sort of denoted as k. So, this is a slight uh, technical definition n prime is taken to be something smaller than uh, n which is n by 6 plus k by 3, but these are the restrictions that we are concerned with so, ok. So, uh, h i of x and certain variables are assigned 1, certain variables are assigned 0, some of them are left free. The number of variables left free is k by 3 where k is b of h and now we can observe that the h i is when you think of them as uh, a function on the weights as a function on the weights and written down as a row vector they will give you an upper triangular matrix. And then 
you can show that the threshold over uh, n prime many bits with threshold parameter k by 3 is going to be a linear combination of these hi's and as a result we can bound the probability degree of h on the lower side with the probability degree of the threshold that is because essentially what we have done here is we have reduced threshold to h. So, now the, the threshold parameter here is k by 3 which is why we get square root k and we are done with this case. Yeah, yeah in this case as it is yeah, yeah. So, for the threshold no, no 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 nothing nothing yeah. Okay, so more generally how will it go? So, let us start with an arbitrary symmetric Boolean function and uh, B is denoted as the period of G, K is the B of H. So, we look at cases if B is not a power of P the first case that we consider uh, more or less the same set of tricks works. So, we can show that the mod Q function where Q is chosen appropriately not equal to P essentially the mod Q function reduces to G as a low degree polynomial in the restrictions of G. So, it may not be a linear combination, but it will be a low degree polynomial in this case the degree will be log B essentially. So, mod Q will reduce as a low degree polynomial in the restrictions of G and therefore, we get the probability degree of Q as omega square root n. And if B is a power of P then majority will reduce to G again as a low degree polynomial in the restrictions of G. And then again we know that the probability degree of majority is omega square root n. So, we are through. In the third case the threshold will reduce to h as a linear combination as we saw just now and we have the probability degree for thresholds and therefore, we have covered all the cases for uh, g and h. need not be x or right depends on the field it is some linear polynomial in the hi's. Well, the polynomial for f in terms of g and h will be I guess g plus h minus 2 g h or something like that. So, it is it is fine uh, does not depend on the field it is g plus h minus 2 g h yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, then we combine these bounds and get the correct bound for f. So, that covers the lower bound side and ok. So, what do we do with upper bounds? We essentially start with the Allman Williams bound and the more general version of the Allman Williams bound is this given a Boolean function f symmetric and error epsilon the probability degree of f is big O square root n log 1 over epsilon as a function of epsilon. So, let us start with the standard decomposition and uh, in this case if B is a power of P then we essentially write G as uh, a polynomial in the elementary symmetric polynomials and then we can conclude that the probability degree is at most big O B and if it is not a power of P then we just use the Allman Williams bound do nothing. On the other hand H will reduce to thresholds as a sum of thresholds again and how do we do this uh, we will see in a, in a moment. So, we know the probability degree for thresholds as big O square root t and then we will get the probability degree for h as big O square root k and then combining both the bounds we get the construction for probability polynomial for f that will finish the theorem. So, just before wrapping up a few details more. So, for thresholds how do the upper bounds work? So, this is the more general expression for the upper bound for thresholds as a function of the error epsilon. And the proof is more or less following Allman Williams, it is an inductive construction. So, assuming that we have uh, probability polynomials for all n prime less than n, we just start with an input vector x and uh, sample n by 10 many coordinates from there. And now we readily have uh, a probabilistic polynomial for any error epsilon prime on n by 10 many variables and any threshold value. So, if the Hamming weight of x is much larger than t then even after sampling we can 
get with high probability that the Hamming weight of x hat is also going to be on the correct side of t by 10. So, the lower order uh, probabilistic polynomials will output the correct value. So, and therefore, we just invoke the uh, epsilon by 4 error probabilistic polynomials by induction hypothesis and output the values. In the other case, when uh, the Hamming weight of x is certainly greater than t but not too far away, then we have this additional case where probably x hat jumps sides and therefore the probabilistic polynomial applied to x hat the lower order one might give us the value 0 instead of 1. So, what do we do in that case? Well, the Hamming weight is still in the interval t to t plus square root t log 1 over epsilon and this is the bound we are looking for. So, we just ignore x hat and use an exact polynomial interpolating that uh, interval and output the value. The only change from the Allman Williams proof is essentially the base case where well Allman Williams only had to consider uh, epsilon less than 2 to the minus n in which case you just use the exact polynomial and you will get degree n. But in this case we have uh, an additional case of epsilon less than 2 to the minus t but uh, we essentially reduce the problem to or and use its probabilistic polynomial. Yeah. So, in summary what we do is so we want to obtain low degree approximation for symmetric boolean functions in a probabilistic sense via probabilistic polynomials. We make the use of standard decomposition and obtain bounds on the components of the decomposition and combine them that is how we go with the proof. For upper bounds the construction is inspired by Allman and Williams inspired in the base case and in the inductive case it is the same. And for lower bounds we use restrictions and reductions to functions whose probability degree lower bounds are already known. So, that is our strategy and yeah that is how we want that. Suppose you had a time characterization for the probability degree for all. Okay. I mean is that the only place where the log factor comes in or are At other? two places. So, the log factor is coming in because of the non tightness of OR okay, that's what and mean. also in the construction. So, so, then, then so we are writing uh, the function as a polynomial in the restrictions. So, that is where an additional log factor is coming in because the polynomial is low degree although it is low degree it is still log b. So, that is where an additional log factor comes in. So, that is from the construction. So, cannot say it should be there, but it is it is there by the proof. And do you also have to I mean the, those I mean the final step you had to work with a different epsilon even though throughout this you are looking at this epsilon being a constant. Correct. So, induction you lose right, right. We, we scale down the uh, error by a factor of 1 by 4. So, all of it works if we do not scale down too much and that is essentially the idea behind the Allman Williams thing. Yeah. There is no question, just that. Okay.